This conference will Hello, now everyone. be recorded. This is Harry Hemsey. Today is uh, Thursday, November 17th. This is a retake of last night's webinar, except with today's data, of course. Um, time is 4.17 p.m. Last night, the recording did not go well. We don't understand why. I've wrote, written to go, go to meeting slash go to webinar. Been with them since 2007. This has never, ever happened. So we just need to find out why. Having said that, um, here's here's a quick and dirty uh, review. We discussed a little bit last night. I'm not gonna get into that uh, about where we are with the um, system house in Chicago, where we're running or we're just going to a better spot. You know, so but, but it's a direct usage of trade station. So there's no translation involved with two different FCMs. Uh, I have access to it from here to install software and update and the, uh, uh, you know, kind of, review and we split the task me and the, and the trader the trader 20 years with the company and i actually understand the company uh, because i knew the father i didn't know years ago that they were involved in this it's called letter of direction rather than lpoa so it's their their license they're non-cta i'm sorry they're non-cta but they're licensed and they do a letter of direction for zillions of people it's really the idea for people who don't want to trade themselves and of course we limit the size. We're not going to have any big trades there. Uh, but they, 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 this doctors, lawyers, dentists, that kind of stuff, where the money trades on the machine and only trades ORB. No chat room, does not trade any after hours, no tiger shark, none of that. Just very, very basic package. It started for friends and family. It's going a little bit more, but I'm, uh, I'm just still limiting on my end for friends and family. It's not even on the website. Uh, if it gets more robust, I, we didn't think before it was because of it, the house was being executed. I did not like some of the practices, uh, but beggars can be choosers. I need to get some traction. Once we got that that post, you know I me, mean? I, I, I have a strong will. I force it on other people. So this is what we're gonna do it this way or else. So, uh, and we're probably gonna downgrade what we're doing over there starting January. Just the way it is, it's called power. You have to, when you have power, you have to execute it and apply it. Just like the US Navy or US Air Force. You know, just that I'm from that school. But first, you have to strive to get to that location. And so here we are. That was the chat then. Um, we, we posted sometimes the results on the Twitter. We posted some last night. Um, that's that. On the, HP, uh, H, uh, the people who use the systems here, please make sure you follow up on our Twitter uh, for um, prop trading. Please make sure that you're following that. It's for members only. Um, and let's see uh, what else I want to tell you. Here's what, so and you have to be registered. If you're not registered, we will not, uh, we cannot accommodate you. Uh, it's not for, I'd say really more than anything else, this is what it is. It, more than anything else, it's the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, emergency comm message, comm, comm uh, uh, channel. If something goes wrong with emails or even our uh, uh, internet here, that's on Twitter. Totally different setup on a cell. Include, please include Twitter on your phone. Then, then we have an instant connection with you as we hit it. You get it, okay? Mainly for messages of emergency. We're not gonna put trades there. It's strictly the trades are too fast. This just tells you if you have a status issue, we have a system problems, what have you, or we have updates we have done and so forth. So you aware of the system checks in general, okay? And uh, what else I was gonna tell you there? Um, we sent you an email overnight. Unfortunately, it was a bad link. The link should have been to this which is www.twitter.com slash H-A-P-E-D-S. And then of course, you need to uh, sign up through, you need to register your handle. That is, we need to know what handle are, because it's not a Facebook, it's, uh, he's, he's ready to go. So if you my account, you put it in there. I won't open it because it shows my password. One day in the webinar, I did that. We had to scramble and close the password because I have an SU password. Super user, it, it handles everything, it's too dangerous. So we're not gonna do it, we're not gonna record it. And uh, we just you just go there next to log out, you see that clip and you put it there. If you have a handle there that uh, is from the past, you're changing it, you can't write over it. It's a write only, I'm sorry, write once only. And that's because people were changing Twitter handles and it was a musical chair, so we can't handle that. So you have to write to us, we'll change it for you, okay? And then you can swap, request it to follow by a new handle and we'll kill the other handle. And every so often we do a uh, audit, 
anybody that the handle we don't recognize and it's not on our server, we delete. So, and the worst thing can happen is that your handle is not there. We connected you in a in a rush, like you know, some people I did today, like Steve Carlson, but I don't know he's registered or not. But in a rush, we let you in, no problem. But let's say Nancy goes through her audit and cancels you because could not find you on our server. Then three days later, we have a shutdown somewhere. We need to get to you. You won't get the message. So please make sure you follow the instruction. And this is for your own good. And you're following the Twitter properly. All right. One more thing. And then we go to the webinars here. Uh, psychology of trading. We have had like 55 people, almost 60 by now signed up. I haven't checked it today. But that was before the webinar last night. This is with Marshall Freed, my good friend Marshall Freed. Uh, psychology of day trading futures. If this anybody knows ES is Marshall. Hey, I mean, in a 95, 96 time frame, he was talking about SP back then. Uh, but using trade station and back then you had to call it your like EDF man or Jack Carl and so forth. You would place your orders in. Um, Roger O'Brien, what have you. There's nobody like him around. I finally convinced him to do a webinar. He's a little shy and says, what am I going to talk about for an hour? I said, promise. I promise you, you won't talk more than half, but then you need to have 15, 20 minutes at least for Q&A. Every time he gave a talk in our user group in LA, the place was packed, packed. I mean, fire marshals would show up and say, hey, you got you to get a few people out of the room. We're over the limit. And, uh, and the Q&As would go for another hour afterward. So, but tremendous guy, super well off. He doesn't have a website, he doesn't have an indicator, nothing. As a matter of fact, he indicates his uses while I wrote for him. And he and I collaborated in the 90s with each other. Uh, that uh, uh, first hour, high and low, the original version, the first version was he and I. It took us a while to put it together. Of course, we, we, you know, we, had, we, we putz around, a couple of mistakes we have. When I got to Chicago, it was clear what exact form we should have on this using it. I also love CI. Oh, God. Does he, Cash, does he love CI? I mean, if I tell Marshall, we lost the code to CR. We don't have it anymore. He'll fly up here. He'll fly out here. Yeah. He's like that. He's fanatic when it comes to CI. So you're going to have a very interesting webinar. Uh, December 14th, 5 p.m. It's the night that we do uh, PMT, but we're not going to have any PMT that night. I'm not sure about next week and all that because it's, I mean, I'll, I'll be the move and you guys, it's a holiday too. That's the day after our FOMC. We may be a little bit tired, but so be it. That's the day he's available. So December 14th market, we have 250 people only in the room capacity, and I think it's going to be occupied. The, and the rate is ramping up, so keep that in mind. All right, let's do the webinar here quickly. Remember, we're recording this. Uh, okay, uh, timing uh, chart. Of course, we were talking last night. We have two today added thing. Someone asked me last night. One thing about the, the, the webinar was not recorded by mistake. What is your bias for tomorrow? I said, down. Uh, and I think I said that this gap needs to be filled. And we're still, I'm still of that belief. We did not even go positive. Okay. Maybe be, barely we touched it on futures, but did not go positive. That's a key level people watch. It's called unchanged. Do we get to unchanged or not? If you hang around on the floor, you'll see that. There are guys who do a lot of analysis. The trades don't have time to do analysis. They team up or they buy a service from these guys who are terrible traders, but they're good analysts. But well, we're going to have that mix. Very few people are good at both. Most people are good at one. Either good analysis or good trading. So they buy the service from others who hang around the pits and they're good analysts. And they give them these levels. One of the levels they're going to constantly tell you is unchanged. And, if, and sometimes these guys who are paying size, they get updates like every hour. So the guy who has a service runs to them, to these clients, and give them the handout. Of course, I don't know what's left on the floor now post-COVID. But uh, even in the slow days of, let's say, uh, 2012, 2010 to 2010 of that era, where Pitt was still there, but small, 5, 10, 15 people, still these guys were out giving uh, 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 opinions on the, on the hourly basis. And plus, we had a lot of people sitting on the desks. We're not in the pit, there was what's called upstairs. That means they're really trading on a screen. And they would buy these reports. You see, and key part of it was where we would get started and change. Did we touch it? Did we fail? Did we punch through it? It all has a sense of a psychology for the floor. Okay. So, 
Remember, Marshall has never been on the floor. Marshall is like you guys. Marshall is guys like, you know, trading from the, no, well, some of you guys. Because I know some of you guys like Craig or uh, Johnny, that you guys have been on the floor for many years. Various uh, instruments. But for the most part, it's like you guys. It was called upstairs. It showed up the screen. I'm one of the hybrids who happen to do both. I mean, I didn't go on the floor and actually trade anything. I didn't have a badge. But I, you know, I sat, I stand next to Lewis, mostly, you know, one of the biggest SMB traders. I'm one of the toughest, you know, what in the market. <laughs> you know, what, you know what I mean? <laughs> Lewis. Uh, but I mean, I mean, I would have my numbers and then, you know, he would trade next to me. And uh, so I, I learned a lot on the floor. But, you know, so I don't call myself this hybrid. But, you know, but I've, I've had that exposure over the years. And same thing at Siebel. Same thing with option guys there for how these guys manipulate, see, interpret, uh, cajole, whatever you want to call it, through these treacherous markets. So, uh, but it's not easy to do both. Let me put it this way. Uh, anyhow, so I think this this uh, situation is still going to work out itself. The issue is what's the problem? Maybe we have a quiet day tomorrow, and then this would be met over the weekend. But that's my thinking. The, 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 the slope of the 200 days still is negative. We could not get through it. This was a this was what uh, 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 when the, this was Tuesday with the PPI big day, but we, and we closed kind of halfway, um, but no no resolution there. And the big day today, but we recovered. They really came back and recovered, but that's where we are. Okay, my system the signal was at three in the morning to sell, and you saw how we opened. Uh, we went back and forth quite a bit today. Uh, let's see. Yeah. The system gave a sell at, uh, this is Tiger Shark. Actually, at 4.50. 4.51 a.m. Gave, gave a signal. Yeah, 4.51. Yeah. Uh, MNQ were trading at, uh, as was a confluence, a bunch of lines crossed at 17, at, at 11,770. When that crossed, everything just collapsed. And we didn't bottom out until, uh, I think, 9.30, 9.31, yeah, 9, 9, 9.28. We did not bottom until 9.28. And now it's been rallying up, all right? The, 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 the indicators are having a different story. Yes, of course. I'm sorry. To wait for him. Yes, you need to register for him. Yes, December 14th, yes. That's a different registration, uh, Frank, yes. It's about uh, uh, Marshall. Yes, yes. You would, you would enjoy that. You would. I'm on another line. Call me later. Sorry. Anyhow, anyhow. Sorry. They're, they're just uh, so you 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 need. Yeah, his uh, December 14th, Friday. It's the uh, non far. Uh, what do you call it? It's a, uh, C C B O E. I mean, I'm sorry. F O M C. Go to F O M C. And that's it. Cat by the Comcast will go up, but right here, first link. You click on that, you just link it here. You just register that. There are about 55, 60 people signed up. Just put your stuff in and go. Boom. All right. Marshall Freed, very nice guy. Extremely knowledgeable in his world. In terms of, in terms of psychology, he he really gets it. He really gets it. You know? And he took me on his uh, wings and taught me yes. I mean, back then it was called SP. I mean, before that, all I knew was bond, U.S., the 30-year bond. And then, of course, after that, I said, I want something faster. <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting into. It's called the MQ. You know, lower volume, higher beta, but that has more of a punch. You get to your target sooner. Yes, you could sit there for hours. You could sit there for hours and go a few hundred. I remember we trading ESP back then, $500 a point. The range on the day was four or five bucks on average day. Four or five dollars, so it would move like two thousand dollars total, total. But now, Jesus, that, that's a sneeze. So, so that's that. So this is a timer chart. Here's the NDX. Pretty much the same process. We have the same gap down here that has to be filled. Again, you'd see the divergence. You see the divergence? Are we good? Higher prices, lower McLaren oscillator. I mean, as simple as widely accepted as McLaren oscillator is got a problem. It's got a divergence. So. I, I, I don't see this going to take 4,000 out. I hear it on Twitter, this, that, that. Okay. You can say what you want on Twitter. 
at the end of the day, what happens on the chart matters. So we shall see. I'm no smarter than anybody else. I read and I analyze and I say, okay, it's noted politely. So, okay, canaries in a coal mine. Again, my issue was look at uh, 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 the what do you call it? the uh, uh, transportation, and we were a little bit unchanged there yesterday. Also a little bit unchanged today. This was like I think ten bucks or twelve bucks yesterday. Now it's seven. So uh, the thirty. Uh, industrials have not moved, moved much today. So, so be it. This is what we are. Uh, but we're not going to go anywhere up on the upside. We have a big down day on the uh, uh, tax position. And look at how it was today. Today's a doji. So, this is constructive. This is a big reversal internally. Could we go up a little bit? Maybe. And maybe that would be a hook. Maybe that's a, a, a head fake to bring you in and then. Uh, Cut off the neck at the neck level or at the knee level, whichever you prefer, uh, into over the weekend. Something something stupid that, let's say, Comrade Putin does. Uh, now these CIs are based on the sec the second subgraphs, the uh, Twitter and Russell. I'm sorry, transposition and Russell. I said, keep on doing. You can see there's a cross there, and you can see a small cross at lower level. So they're both vulnerable here. We are both now. Transposition had jumped above. 200 day. For a few days, I thought, okay, maybe the stocks are coming back. I don't think so. And the Fed has been pretty hawkish. And we understand. The problem is the economy is just beginning to understand and realize the net effect of higher interest rates. The only bright spot is banking because the interest income is going to be positive. That's all. Rest of the economy is going to be in trouble. Look at the inventories. Look at the guy from Starwood, what he was talking about today. Well, what's happening on rentals and on inventories? They have to cut back. We will have higher unemployment. It it, it costs a carry. Simple stuff. It's it's a econ. It's a microeconomics one on one. Micro, not macro. Micro. Read the back of the uh, uh, MDNA. You know, management discussion analysis of any uh, well written, well well put together annual report. That's that's also filed with the SEC. It, it's all there. It's it's, it's going to happen. You see the impact, and I think the, the, by by the time we get to January, you're going to get the downgrade, the write downs or uh, um, t talk downs of the earnings and expectations. So that's you're going to see some from some of the CFOs now. It was a, it's a CYA to cover the, the rear end now, but you're really going to see the numbers miss in January. So I suspect January to uh, uh, let's say June is going to be a tough period, and I'm going to be super busy. As always, when the market goes bad, they all run to daddy. And this is what happens with us. We explode. It, we did it in the 2020. Our busiest month in the last few years were the March 2020 to, uh, let's say, June. They were just exhausting. But that's what happens as the market goes down. Because on the top, everybody is a genius. Right, Mr. Petrucci? You, you would attest to that, right? Everybody is a genius. Even Tico is a genius, but the issue is what do you down here? So, actually, I think market will bottom a little bit earlier, but not the economy. Yeah, so that's going to be the that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a pressure. Uh, and if the oil drops, let me know. I don't see it. I don't see oil dropping. No. So let me know. I mean, by drop, I mean below 60, 55. Yeah, I don't see it. And that's that's it. The toll it will take on uh, 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 what do you call it? Okay, we're missing an indicator here. Uh, the trend is not here. Sorry, let's go. We can't have that. Okay, here we go. I have to find what the code, why the code is missing. I'll add it in there for the next time. Okay, uh, okay, these will not run. They were running yesterday. I'll give you a system. We're short here, weekly is short, daily when long about here. This bar. That's as of yesterday. That's got to change. It's going to stay long. Uh, th this is a problem right there. Look at Momo versus uh, look at uh, 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 SP1. The, 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 this, is what is, this is called SP1 Momo, this chart. That combo, this indicator and that. You could see it there, again, divergence. Still going up. This is really dropping fast. This is a short-term brethren of this, as used as a, a, 
uh, uh, signaling tool uh, in in in, uh, in the gear design. So uh, not nothing fancy, just really simple stuff. But what this says is that the advanced decline is not looking good. That's the bottom line. It says they're, they're based on advanced decline. As for on S&P 500, we don't put all the junk in there. That's in the NYC. This is the 500 names, and not very good. This is the high and lows, 52 weeks high and low, and uh, um, we're not. Uh, most likely, we're probably heading up a little bit because the lows have dried up. Usually, when the lows go up, you're near the bottom, and which is this area, and you, you tend to go up, but they're very quiet. And then, but we're not peaking here either, so we kind of a limbo here. Uh, it could break out either way, but. Uh, as long as the talking heads keep talking, we'll see. We'll see which which way it's gonna go. Uh, I think we need to get our chart straight from a geometric standpoint. Once we get that out of the way, then you have a good construct. Let's go to walls. Well, you know, the screens are too big. Okay, you can see. Oh, by the way, this is a problem. I've kept on telling Sibo that only says you cannot have walls like this. It's a plot issue. I got some of another note. They don't get it. Uh, and VXN is really a cleaner setup than VX. I don't know why they're doing this. But anyhow. Um, okay. uh, we, 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 we came down a little bit today. It we, looks like it was turning over. It says the ball should be going up. Market should be going down, actually. It's in, a, in a way, it's saying market have local maxima right now. That's what this says. Tico, calm down. So it could be I don't know. Long long and short of it is that this this is the spot for it. Can you give us your what, what these daily options? I have no idea. I haven't looked at it. all I know is that they're you mean they expire daily? So they're back to back every day, right at the end of a week or end of a month? I mean third week of the third Friday of a month? Yeah, I have no idea. I haven't looked at it. You know, Admiral would be a better person for that. Yeah, that's too much. To me, it's a it's a sign of uh, crushed risk capital. So they're they're slicing it for you, like IBM. It's like a, a mortadella. You're going to get a mortadella, okay? At your ne nearby deli. Uh, they don't send you the whole thing. You're buying a little piece of it. I think it's very expensive. I mean, to me, there's nothing used to up to now. Nothing was more expensive than these weekly options, because you don't appreciate what Walder is saying, selling to you, and you guys are gobbling it up. And then at the end of a month, you look at the results and you didn't make much money. The market market maker just cleaned up. This could be another uh, financial engineering invention to slowly take your money out of your pocket with your acceptance, with your signature. I don't like it. Yeah. I still like what they call monthlies. First of all, you have a lot of volume. Oh, for a longer time, you can plan something. And you know the volume exists there. Because you know, weekly, you only have a couple of weeks at volume. Then they die dramatically. So you can't really plan anything. Might as well do the monthlies. Um, if you're doing it in lieu of a stock, then do leaps. Okay, do leaps in lieu. Because long call. By itself, it's like that. owning a stock is about lower price. Uh, so that's that's what I I would really if I if if I had my choice, I would stick with the leaps actually. Yeah, the brokers and clearing houses are the hogs have it. Yeah, they are loving it. They love you. When they say they love you, they love you. When they send you like my future guy used to do in Chicago from IB Carol, send me the could I have a chocolate and flowers? Yeah, he meant it. It was. I gave it all away at the end. Yeah, I just. I had a, I had a basement which was cool. Basement full of chocolate. I gave it away. So, trust me. It just. It's nuts. Trade less. Yeah. And you know how are you gonna decipher what's the underlying? When I was doing put call ratios, you look at few items. I would give you get a picture. Now the clutter is heavy. Exactly. Yeah. It just the clutter is heavy, and so you can't get in there. You don't know what's happening. Yeah. Well, this is uh, also SIBO. SIBO. 
Not just CME, but also SIM. Yeah. Let's talk about SQ. I think this was a high level of our talk last night. Look what's happening. SQ, now let's, is this today? Hold on. Today data? No. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Today's not it. I bet you it'll be a little bit higher even. The SKU, let me see. It's not updated yet. That's as of last night. Yeah, okay. It's rising. Remember, before it was dipping down and moving the all time low, lower even. Okay. So it said the big words are not seeing any problems down below. All of a sudden, they're saying uh, something may be going on. It's not at the signal level. Remember, now your range has changed. You're 110 on the bottom, 170. So the median is 140, right? So 160 here. So median would be 30 points from the low. So that would be around 140. So this is not a signal yet. But if this creeps up to 140, you guys see, well, two things are happening. The big boys are saying there's something down below. There's something underneath for us. Okay. So to me, this is still constructive, even though it's just edged up. But if it crosses 140, it says we may have an actionable item down below. Okay. And so that's what you're going to see. Okay. How do we, what causes that? How do we get there? Hold on. You can only get there from the construct. Okay. After you review the construct of SQ, it gets there because they're buying out of the money puts. It's a tail risk, right? It's out of the money puts deep of SPX options, the big contract, not SPY for kids. This is SPX for institutions. Let's say down here. Remember, we talked about 3,500, 3,700 to this area for what? A year? We finally got there. I think now, if we look at anything below, I'd look at 3,000, 3,200 area. And VIX at 40. We can't, it's not a low when we have VIX is at 23. It wasn't a low at 33. This is 23. That was 32. No, it wasn't a low. This wasn't a low. Why? There was no volume. There was no event. FTX is not volume. FTX is, uh, who knows what FTX is, okay? Um, the FTX doesn't make the low. I'm talking about firm really getting in trouble. If you look at four sigma, you can see the 40. That's a 40 line. So if we get into trouble, let's say early next year, that's where we're going to be probably. 46. And by then, you'll have a construct for SQ to be, let's say, 150 area. Now that, then you watch out. Then 60, 90 days forward, we're going to have a problem. You're going to have a problem. And we're going to be buying a lot of puts there. Like we've done other times. Most of my best shorts the last five years was from SQ. So stay tuned. Yeah. You know, I was, me and the guy from uh, Citadel, he was sort of involved. He runs a company now, Gallium, I think. It's not Gallium. I think it's Gallium. I forget. Gladius? No, it is going to be Gladius, not Gallium. Yeah, Glad, Gladian, Glad, uh, Gallian uh, slows down. So Gladius, Gladius, I just know. He's, a, he's an Indian fellow, Indian American. Very smart. Came highly recommended. Yeah, he was running, uh, he was set of wall training for, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, for for um, Citadel. Ken Griffin. Uh, he's the one who's called Trump the other day, three time loser, man, finally. After he poured all that money into Trump. Yeah. Okay, Ken. Now he lives down here too. He moved down here. I understand. Says I was down in Florida. But yeah, you know, um, he couldn't talk to me. And he uh, himself told me, he says, but I, I can't talk until I'm out because of the way their non disclosure is. As he got out, he says, Fag, have you looked at this? I got introduced to SQ by him. And it was just coming out of SIBO. SIBO was just finishing their last touches of the design of SQ. So I've been looking at it since the day that was public. Um, and I had to make build my own rules, including put sigma challenge on it. But uh, the last five years, all my best calls to a downside came from uh, the pattern of SQ. I intend to repeat that. You just have to keep watching it. You just can't, you have to be concentrated on it. Yeah. So that's where it could uh, it could help us as we go forward. Next, treasuries. Okay. This is today we bumped up a little bit, but you could see a dramatic drop. This was a CPI. This was last Thursday or last Wednesday. That's CPI. Uh, this is PPI. Thursday, Friday, Monday. Yeah, this is 
this is PPIL. So we have dropped quite a bit. Note where it went to the test. These are, uh, this is the DS1. This is the pivot, right? No, I'm sorry, MS1, monthly uh, support one. This is a MP, monthly pivot. Yeah, it went through that. You could what the rise we've had. Here, move this along a little bit. Yeah, this, this is phenomenal. And you can see also here, this was phenomenal. So we went up from August on, like there's no tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and so, uh, ah, yeah, it, I mean, this changed the ball game in terms of the financing. And then capitalism needs financing. There's no question. You know, people are net savers, the other side are entrepreneurs and have a vision. They meet together, it, cre it creates, it's called a bank that takes the net savers money and lends it out to you under a certain criteria and watches that money because they have their own profit at risk. And that's the way it should be. It should be. You should should not be centralized, should be in hand of people who can manage their own capital and manage risk and understand it. And those who, uh, I mean, I'm kind of a Ayn Rand type, plays a fair to the point. If you're lousy, you're going to get crushed. Capitalism is if it will punish you itself. Now people think we're going to have SEC and CFTC and all that. Okay, I agree to some degree. But they should be at the periphery. The market itself will discipline you. It's just the way capitalism works. So, um, so, and so when this thing turned around, came back down, I think is a reprieve for real estate, for uh, 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 for banks, for uh, autos. But watch out! It hasn't hit the economy yet. Once it hits the economy, you're gonna see you're gonna see unemployment rise. Problem is inventories, and we can't, we cannot keep building inventories. So they have to cut back on production. The cost of holding goods. Yeah, we, we were near zero inflation for 40 years. You think of it. I then it's sporadic a few movements in between. Every time, every, it seems like every 10 years we have a financial crisis. You know, 2001, 2008, 2020. Some form of financial crisis, we have to start printing cheap money. And what happens? Fed uh, uh, balance sheet goes up. I guess to a point where you're pushing on a rope. I, I know it sounds, sounds like a Fed speak, but. Uh, you know, if you're a Fed watcher, I'm not. I just a little, I know a little bit on a periphery to be dangerous. But if you look at it, you'll see they're going to be running out of bullets soon. And if we have a next financial crisis, it's going to be painful. And if you are in the asset arbitrage, yeah, maybe you'll survive. Maybe. Uh, but if you're long only, I got news for you. You're in the wrong spot. Long only is not going to do. That's buy and hope. Buy and hope is not going to do. So those who don't buy, now if you're long and you don't buy insurance, that is you don't have some put underneath your, as a floor underneath you, you're going to have a rude awakening. Because now they're saying buy the effing dips now, right? Well, when that event comes, and I think somewhere on the horizon, it's going to be extremely painful for the keep buying dips. I mean, I have a friend right now who's a, Probably should be admitted to the hospital. Yeah, his uh, system has completely failed. Nervous system. Yeah, because th this whole past uh, uh, year he kept on buying the dips because he says they're going to come back. He has always come back. Oh well. So don't go there. Good point, Admiral. There you go. We have a treasure here, guys, called Admiral Marcus Posito. In terms of options, I don't I don't see how you're gonna find somebody as well as that. I mean, I I respect him for options and I respect Marshall for futures. Keep that in mind. So yeah, if you have a question of options, that's the guy you go to. But remember he's a Roman, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can pay him with some Liras. <laughs> So anyhow, no, but it's a good one. All right, what are we doing here? Okay, why are we not plotting here? Okay, I'm sorry. The, I'll fix this for next time as an emergency. There should be another plot here, which is the spread. These two have a special indicators I have to send in, which I wrote, it's not on this machine. Remember, we clean all this machine for you guys, remember? That one day, yeah. I'll put it back in here, that's missing. Here though, SP1 is running, SP2, I'm sorry. SP2 is running, that in itself is telling us, oh, let me do this. 
that uh, one, 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 is 4,000 SPX is a nebulous thing, you know, so we'll see. I mean, we probably won't drop too much. I'll be alarmed if we hit the 20 day, which is a yellow line. I would be scared if we hit the uh, 50 day. Okay. Uh, and because past 50 day, we're going to be taking this out. Otherwise, nobody's going to, I mean, you're going to go no bid. If we take 3,800 out, which is 37.92, by the time we get there, will be this will coming up a little bit. It's the nature of moving averages. We'll be 3,800. We take 3,800 out, there's going to be no bid. It's going to be nothing underneath. And go. Yes, there's more than two of you. Yeah. There's also a Glado. Of course, Peter I. Peter I. Well, Peter is a very quiet guy. Uh, totally un understated. Yeah. One of the biggest uh, traders I knew on the, the NYMEX floor. Yeah. Very smart, very studious, and does a lot of spreads. Very sharp guy. Yeah. Um, he, he has a place down here. We usually get together for a bite to eat every time he's down here, but, you know, because of COVID, it's been away. Ah, um, great house on the bay. What a view. Uh, but anyhow, uh, okay, now there we go. Look, look down here, look down here. Okay, so look down here. We talked about rendezvous points. We missed. They weren't exactly together, but they never are. You got to kind of uh, accept it the way things are in the day to day. But look how they're fast turning. The short term went to a, almost a, um, a potentially oversold condition, a short one. Because we were running three of them at the same time. So uh, I think we should be heading down a little bit. We are picked out early. So this is telling me also, look at the divergence again. And you know, this is very, very accurate for short term market timing. I mean, on like a weekly basis, there's nothing like this, SP2. SP2 was written uh, after uh, IB stuff. If you go to IB stuff, hold on, let me. We open up, uh, hold on, uh, hold on. Yeah, th this one, I three IBs. We have it open again. This one was the one that Marshall and I worked on, but not this version of it. Now that's and that's not as sophisticated as this, but it was just basically trying to do some analysis for whether well, the first hour has an impact or not. And some folks were telling us first two hours are important, so we had double. We had these on top of each other. First hour and then. The time where Europe closes confused us. By the time I got to Chicago, that cleared. Floor guy saying, no, 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 no. Just use the first hour. We, we, we're not that sophisticated. We have a back of envelope calculation. That's what it is. And they would do it. During the first hour, they would write down the low and the high. If it changes, they cross it to a new number. Put a new number. New number, then it stays. Then this becomes a level. The bottom didn't change. Same thing on a down day, except in reverse, like here. They change it down. Of course, this was really meant to be for ES, S&P. But that creates the, your range, then they extend it half as much. Very simple. What we add to it was a calendar. This has all the calendar in it. So that you don't have to work half days and all that. You know. And you don't need to even maintain it. It's built in a logic. I can't get into how, what, but yeah. There's some extra features this has that we pull in the background that does this very simply. You know. As a matter of fact, what do you call it? Copied me on this, some of it goes, e-signal. Yeah, because they didn't have that. They didn't have that feature. Yeah, so yeah, that's okay. That's okay. No biggie. Uh, my mom always said, "You can't take your brain with you either." So if they learn something, that's fine. Anyhow, so this is a topic there too. What else we have? Okay, buying high and low stuff. I mean, I'm sorry. Oh, this is not the indicator here. I, I'm sorry. The, 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 this is the buying power. We, this does not have the thing in there yet. Uh, uh, the, the the formula. So let me write this down. We're missing these things that I missed. Let me write it down quickly. Hold on. Sorry. One second. Uh, so we need uh, each render. We need uh, uh, VIX spread. Uh, and we need uh, uh, we need the uh, uh, weekly and daily Timing models, okay, and then uh, timing models. Then, then we miss, uh, we're missing uh, DPI, buying power index. Yeah, okay. I'll bring him in. Yeah, the, the code that I've written, I'm going to bring in, except BPI, that's not mine. Actually, Peter wrote that. Yeah. 
and these were on their buy. But they went to a buy late. Remember, it's trend following. So, but now they, they're, they're getting hammered a little bit. This one says, uh, let me see. Yeah, we, we, we did not do indecision. We did not sell out like we did here, and we bought back. This was a good follow through and then fell again. So, indeterminate. Part of it is these son of a guns, these talking heads from the Fed. Yeah. I really believe that. You, and you could see how the tone changes and, you know, what time they talk. It's always, it's, it's actually more confusing than before. So maybe they don't know what they're doing and they want to just cover their, their end. You know, with a with convoluted Fed speak. Um, so we'll put these in together for later. Sorry about that. Let me go to a last chart and then we wrap this up. But I will take your question. Uh, if you have any, we can post them now. Let's go here. Uh, oh, there we go. Here. Here's your, here's our, uh, uh, as you know, I usually blow this up a little bit. So because uh, 125 is the best that we look at here. Uh, okay. So you could see that uh, uh, this is for today. So that's today data. That's good. Uh, what time is it? 4.58. That's the they're reporting early now. That's good. 20 and 50 moving averages. As I spoke last night about this, the, the, the separation is opening up. Let me go to five years to so get a better perspective. This is new. They didn't have this before. Go to five year, and you can see you get some perspective, especially 2018 uh, uh, low and then COVID low. Uh, you could see what the norm are. We, we seem to have uh, cleared here. The separation is good. It's trying to pull up. But we're in an indeterminate area. 45 to 55. If you've heard me talk about this and go over this in depth, I've always said that. This is a no man's land. This is like a DMZ. 45 to 55. In terms of odds, because it's 100%, uh, 0 to 100%, that's where it's in this decisive. We're in that mode. So stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> is it tomorrow morning? Okay. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's head of, she used to be head of IMF now. So. LVCV. Cesarity should be up. Yeah. The problem with that is we're already hearing about the write downs on the earnings for January. So. And you got a massive FOMO. Because if you were getting that turbocharged uh, Porsche, you may not be getting it as a trader. You get that uh, uh, penthouse condo on fifth. If you're running a large fund, you may not be getting it. Uh, it all depends. You know, if you're trading oil and you had that hundred million dollar check coming in, it's gotta be difficult. So, you know, we are unusual times, and uh, usually they these guys throttle back and they don't want to risk it, but they haven't made any money this year. Tiger, the Tiger uh, Global is like down thirty five percent. If Tiger didn't make it, do you think the small guys can make it? You know what kind of analysts they, analysis they have? You know how many tools they have? You know how many accounts they can trade out of? How, how, how they can uh, tr uh, protect their positions or you don't even know what they have? Yeah. And they still make they have lost major losses? Yeah. The problem is simple. 40 years of no inflation, then you get it hit with 8%. Nominal. Go to grocery store, it's not 8%. Go to gas station, it's close to 50, like 35 plus percent. This shakes the economy, and nobody was ready for that. So that's why we have a mess we have. And I don't think we're gonna get any better. Part of this is gonna happen is that the, the deficit is gonna explode. Okay, I've got news for you. Why? Unemployment. Sales, taxes, all of these are gonna drop. So the receipts will come back down, and we're not cutting back on our expenditures. We keep on doing new programs, as if this is FDR. It's not FDR, it's Joe Biden. Okay, still better than Trump, don't get me wrong. Anything is better than Trump, as, as now Republicans are pointing out. But the point is, this is a different agenda for the balance sheet the, tra tra uh, the uh, uh, Fed has, for the, 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 so the debt, the national debt we're carrying, Interest rate at this rate is, is 
suicidal. I think next year is going to be a very tough year. Okay, so if you know next year is going to be that tough, what's the seasonality for now? You see what I'm saying? And you haven't made much money this year. The big guns. Because remember, most of the Wall Street gets paid in January as, as a bonus. They get a little sustenance here. 200,000, 30,000, 40,000 a month sustenance during the year. And then you get a seven digit uh, check on January. I don't know what's going to be. So, yeah, it was an interesting uh, picture today on uh, at 8 30. Remember the guy from uh, Starwood? I forgot his name. I forgot his name. Uh, uh, who's, the, who's the head of uh, Starwood? He was talking. Uh, uh, the CEO of Starwood. Yeah. No, that's not that's not him. Uh, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this this I'm talking about. This guy, there we go. He was on. He was on CNBC today. Okay, he went to Ron and Harvard. Okay, not bad. Start with Capital Group. I see, not hotels. I see, and then okay, start with Capital Group. Okay, this guy, I guess they own the hotels too. Uh, he had two charts. One was inventories. Inventories were shooting up. Not Starbucks, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's Starwood, not Starbucks. No, no. That's Howard. Howard. Howard doesn't get this complicated, no. Uh, uh, he'll, he'll give you... St Howard will pour you a coffee. He says, drink it and you feel better. No, this guy isn't saying that. This guy is saying, the inventory is going to kill us. Which we can, because of cost of carry. So we got to cut back dramatically because who, the, you know most companies don't have a uh, wake up um, paid in capital like let's say Google has and and uh, interesting enough the guys who have a lot of paid in capital don't have inventories the software okay the software is the guys who don't have paid in capital they have to borrow and they have inventories so now they get a squeeze well how do you cut back on inventory they got lay off people. You know, buy less material, less labor. Again, microeconomics 101, simple stuff. That's one. Two, he showed that on the real estate side, he was talking about uh, the, uh, uh, I gotta let this go through, guys. Uh, he was talking about uh, uh, rentals versus uh, 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 CPI. Uh, I took a picture of it, it's on my phone, off the TV quickly. Okay, hold on. Well, I guess these guys got to be here shortly. Hold on. Hold on. Um, hold on. The, the, I got to go, guys, to Veronica Xfinity. Let me, uh, let me get to this. Hold on. Come on. There we go. Got it. Let me see where it was. It's a CPI for shelter. Okay. CPI for shelter versus actual rents. Guess what? Actual rents are dipping down and getting below CPI shelter. So what the government was showing was way off. It was too slow at the beginning. Now it's rising, catching up, but the rents have peaked and they're shooting down. Well, why? It's just not sustainable. It's coming to reality. And it couldn't be more uh, uh, sensed. It couldn't be more uh, uh, yeah, sensed or felt than in uh, Southwest Florida. Because of COVID, because of the Santis, uh, Policy about COVID, and of course, you have a little bit of now the uh, hurricanes where displacement locally, not just from snowbirds, but from locally. And I'm subject to that. You see it. Last year, the rents went up crazy, absolutely crazy. And I'm telling myself, wait a second, people are still making seven, eight bucks an hour. Okay. Uh, seven, eight bucks an hour. How are they going to be able to pay these? Hey, guys. One second. Hey, help. Hold on. Peter, hold on one second. Guys, I got to wrap up. I've got to run. Are we good here? Okay, let me sh uh, close here. We'll see you guys later. Thanks.